This is the next day after the rainy day. And I've put the water pump on. There's not enough room there. I actually used the old one, well, the new one, to get an idea where the holes were. When I had the new one out of the box, I could see where the holes were, so I knew where, where the bolts were, how many there was. Changed that over. It's quite tight down there. The only thing is, I don't have this bit here for the tensioner. So I'm going to have to take that off, the old one, and put it into the new one. Uh, but my plan is to get this built up because I want to get it on its own engine mount. And the timing cover is part of the engine mount. Or the engine mount bolts onto that. So I need to get this built up before I can really carry on doing the other bit. So I want to get it so it's, so, so I want to get it so it's supported properly. And then I'll, I'll finish off the other bits. I've still to change the seals behind the camshafts for the pulleys. So I'll take them off and change the two seals in there. Um, I did get, in the new belt kit, I did get new blanking plugs that I didn't realise for the back. So I'm happy about that. Because that'll be peace of mind. I don't want it to leak again. They go into there when you're finished. I was going to use the old ones because I didn't think I had any in the head gasket set, but they've come in the timing belt kit, so that's pretty good. So I can't really show you much because when my hand's in there, like that, and I'm putting the bolts in, there's really not much room. I can't even see the bolts myself whilst I'm doing it. So I'll just show you the bits that, that I can. Like, for example, I could show you taking this out. I got one of these sockets that you can take out this, so I'll just do that and then it can go into the new one. Right, let's see if it comes out. Oh yeah, it came out quite easily. I'll do it two-handed, but anyway, I'll get that stud put into the new water pump and I'm going to change those oil seals. This bit right here that sticks out, that lug, Obviously goes into the groove that's down here. I don't know if you can see it when my hands in there. Of the strobe light effect of that light. But it helps. That light's pretty good. There. So that's on. This pulley at the back is the exhaust. That one was really tight. I put one of these tools in that hold it in place. I can work both the lever with the socket on, the brake bar with the socket, and hold this lever as well at the same time. So I stuck it under here and lowered the engine enough that the bar just happened to fit at the right place. And I could use both hands on the brake bar, and it was really tight, but I got it again. I got it to come off, I mean. So now I can take that off and put a new seal in there. I don't know how I'm going to do the other one yet. Hopefully that's not as bad. I'll find out. Here's the new seals and the old one. Looks like that. There's no actual spring on the inside of this. It's just a lip. Don't know if it's focused, but there's no spring on the inside to hold the seal on. So what it says is Check that there's no damage to the shaft, because it's going to leak if there is. Clean the surface. It's got to be dry. What else does it say? Need the right tool. So you put this thing on, right? That's why they're on these caps. So when you put it on, you can't stir the engine for four hours. And I think that's because what we've got going on is, I don't need that now. This will gradually contract. The center ring, like on the old one, will go and contract during the four hours. This is just how it's transported. And then it'll go nice and snug around that shaft. So I need to clean up the shaft, hammer it in, but you can't start the car for four hours, which is okay, because I've still got the plugs to change. And when I've got it on its engine mount and the jacks out of the way that's under the bottom of the engine, 
uh, with a block of wood on top of the jack between that and the sump. When that's out the way, I can drain the oil and just let all the gunk drip out of it and get on with some MOT repairs that I need to do. Like I got a CV boot to do and a track rod end. So I could leave it four hours easily if I just do these now. So I'm kind of glad I chose to put the belt on now instead of putting the other bits. So I can be doing them whilst I'm giving this the four hours that it needs. But they just go in like a normal seal. But like I say, you have to uh, take that cap off, put it in and make sure it's dry. That's what I asked for, so that's what I'll give it. And I've got the same one here. This one I'll take the cap out and there'll be a bolt behind it that'll come off. Pretty much the same idea. And that's why I got this tool set that's got this bit to make sure I put the pulleys in the right place in case it mattered and I think it does. So that's my next thing and then I can get on with just building it up. I'll be glad when it's finished though. Once it was on part way down I put that on there. I used the lever off there and just slid it on until it was flush with the front of the case. There's that one down. I can put that pulley back on now. This intake defacer isn't tight at all, so I will need a tool, but I'm not going to need to lock it up. And it depends who's been here before, but that's quite quite a slack one. But I've got a, an old towel here because it will be filled with engine oil. So when I take this out, it's going to drip everywhere. That's okay. Actually, it isn't filled. Not what I expected, but it's better to be ready for it. There should have been engine oil coming out of that. So I'll just leave that there. Now I've got the center bolt. What I've had to do with this tool that I used on the other side was make longer studs by cutting the head off some bolts. So I'm going to try this on here. Same way as before, and undo the center bolt. I might not be able to fit this under here this time. There's just enough room on the exhaust, so I'm not going to be able to use that same method here. I'm just going to have to hold it. I'll get somebody to hold the lever down whilst I crack the bolt loose. This pulley came off a lot easier. The bolt wasn't as tight, the center bolt, as the exhaust, so the intake one came off not too bad. And I think if you over tighten it or under tighten it, it's going to affect it. If it's got something that's supposed to turn and you clamp the whole lot together, you might be over tightening it and stopping the burners. But what I was going to say is, like, don't put a screwdriver in here and prise it out from the middle. Because if you put a dent on the shaft, it's going to leak. But if you put the dent on the case, the part that doesn't rotate, it's easy to just seal it with sealant. A little bit of sealant as you push the ring in, the new o-ring, or seal. Right, so once you've done at this, you need a new camshaft to stop the oil leak. So make sure you put the screwdriver on the outside. Now I can put this in, press it in a little bit. So that'll go over the shaft. Try and get that in, get it started. Like that. That's all you can do with it. You don't want it to pop out, but it only goes on so far because you'll go up against the end of the shaft. I think that's it. So I think we're at the point we need the socket now. That's okay. So we give this four hours, same as the other side, for it to take the correct shape. I'll just use this socket idea like I did on the other side, like that, and push it on a little bit more. I don't want it to go too far in though, so I'm going to do it a controlled way with the lever so I can carefully push it in. I don't want it to go too far in. In this case, when I push this against the socket, there was too much gap down here, so I just put the hammerhead down there 
something to lever that against so that I could push it in nice. I don't want it to go too far in, just flush like the same as it came off. So that's that one in. I can put the, the pulley back on and put the belt on. Okay, that's a bit of flickery because of the light I'm using, the strobe effect. Uh, but this pulley down here is one that I'm going to leave off whilst I get the belt on there. I'll just move that so it might look a bit better. It's darker, but there's no strobe. So I'm going to leave that pulley off whilst I fit the belt. Then I can get this tool back on the top, line up both pulleys. Because they're still free to rotate now, I'm not tightening them up fully. Still got the locking pin on the bottom. Still got my tip X mark down there. But the locking pin's in on the start motor on this. Both camshafts are timed and locked at the back. You can't get them wrong because that slot isn't in the middle. It's slightly closer to one of the ends. So it'll only go in one way. So I'm just going to try that now. Take this back off, fit the belt, and then slide this back in after. It's a bit easier that way. The bottom pulley, the crank pulley, I've got the belt on, and this lever is just wedged under the belt. I'm just using the weight of the lever dangling there to hold it up into the teeth so I know it's not going to fall down. So that's holding that into place whilst I set up the rest of the belt. Now I've drained the engine oil, let it all drain. I've given this the four hours rest time for the seals and the exhaust and the intake camshaft. Have the engine timed up. Now this one was a floating camshaft. So the only way I think you can really undo the crank bolt is with an impact. Otherwise you're just winding the crankshaft backwards. But everything's done. I've put the fan belt or serpentine, serpentine belt back on. It's all ready to go. There is one thing wrong with it though. The timing's okay. Had this turned around and rechecked the positions of these plugs. Can't see them now because I've put all that stuff back on. And the plug at the bottom. It's all okay. Except there's no compression. And I'm just wondering whether it's because the hydraulic lifters have been left with the engine draining the oil down. I'm a crank here with this ratchet. Like I say, everything's timed. I think there's a notch on the crankshaft. Looks like a keyway would go in there. But there's no keyway. Like the sprocket just stay still and the crankshaft would rotate. So in this case, that, that's fine though. It's like roughly at the 12 o'clock position when it's right. If I turn this, I don't get any compression peaks. It's just even all the way around, which is kind of worrying after doing all that work. I'm hoping it's the hydraulic lifters. Got a bit of a compression peak up there. I'm hoping it's the hydraulic lifters. And when it gets back up to engine oil pressure, it's going to be okay. But it is a little bit worrying. It's just that I'm convinced the timing's okay. But that's something. There's absolutely no sort of compression peaks when I turn this over by hand. Okay, I suppose you can't be too careful when it comes to timing belts. Now this has got one of these key cards that's got a bit broke. You see the scratches on there? Because about two years ago it stopped working. And I, I said to my ex that there is a way that I've seen on Google or YouTube. You can put a, a knife in there and it helps. See, it says insert the card. Well, it's flashing, but it's not flashing to me. It's just the way it looks. But with the right place with this key, I can't get it to start at all now. See, the X just kept doing this and doing it. Instead of getting it repaired, I did tell. I, I don't do immobilizers or keys. It's just not something I do. I did when I was in the main dealer, but 
Oh gosh, I can't get it to do it. That's that's a pain. I'll have to play around with the key. I can't get it to to work. It says press clutch or start the car and start car. Let's try it. I hope it runs. Remember, there's also no fuel in the fuel rail. So it's going to take a bit of time to prime. Like I say, I was worrying about the compression. Well, that is something that's good to know. See if you have a car that doesn't start and you've just done a load of work on the cylinder head, if it's got hydraulic lifters. crank it, it still doesn't start. It's so stressful, but I just rechecked the timing and uh, it was okay. But that was a little bit stressful right there. It turns out it was okay. It must have just been down to the oil. Um, this is going to smoke a bit from the engine because they do. Actually sounds okay already now. I'll go and show you. Plenty of smoke coming from things. But that'll burn off. I'll just leave it ticking over and hopefully that'll burn off. Actually, I've not put coolant in yet. It was like, you know, the American hot rod, Floyd Coddington, he'd always try the engine first. But now that I know it runs, I'll go and switch it off, put coolant in, and then start it up again and get it wet. Oh, that's so much better. Now I filled that with pure concentrated coolant, uh, antifreeze, and ended up with it running out of here. It's only two liters that I've put in. I think this thing was on water before it started running out of here, so I put the plug back on there, and then there's one right at the back, going to the heater matrix hose by the bulkhead. That started to run out of there, so I put the plug on that. So now, I can run this, I'll get some water ready for topping it up, and uh, leave it running to burn all this crap that's all over the engine off, and check the fans cut in and out, stuff like that. I've got some MOT repairs to do, but I think as far as the cylinder head part of it for the oil leaks goes, that part of it's done, and... So either the cylinder head repairs are, are finished. That part's done and I'm glad about that. I was worrying that there was no compression for some reason. I couldn't get my head around there. It must have just been the hydraulic lifters. But it's totally fine. That Nothing sounds too bad. So now we'll start it up. And um, thanks for watching.